Hello and good morning. My name is Despiff and we are here today to give a tour and walkthrough of the Twitch uh, settings as they relate to safety and moderation um, for a little bit of resume. Um, I'm a professional moderator on Twitch uh, and uh, some highlights of that being in June 2020, I moderated for a lot of black creators uh, dealing with the uh, murder of George Floyd in uh, the fall 2021, a lot of LGBTQIA streamers uh, in response to the hate raids and uh, follow bot waves that were endemic on the platform. Um, I moderated for Critical Role, volunteered there for a number of years with uh, 50,000 concurrent viewers. Um, so I have a lot of experience. Let's dive right in. Um, so, Twitch, um, I am opening this on the web browser. If you are on mobile to follow along, you will need to uh, open your Twitch dashboard in a web browser as opposed to using the Twitch app. The settings are not quite in the same place and some of them are only available on web. So there you go. Um, so just click over to your dashboard. Um, I have it in a separate tab here, but I'll pull it up there. And on the left hand side, you'll have all of the various menus. And so we're just going to go through them all on the main dashboard. There isn't anything directly moderation related with the exception of your quick actions. You can, if you click the, uh, with the open uh, additional quick actions. There are some in here related to managing your stream for setting, uh, if you want a quick button to click for like follower only chat, sub only chat. Um, uh, I think those are the main ones. Uh, running an ad, oh, that's not really moderation related. In your channel insights, there is not anything directly related to safety. This is just where you go to see how you've been doing. Community, um, roles manager obviously to see your moderators um if you need to change those on the fly you can do that there um but that's all for there and then over in content video producer this is not where that setting is there are settings you can choose who can view your highlights um collections no clips no copyright claims no nothing there okay so over to settings first your stream um so here's the the first of the settings uh, if you want to store your past broadcasts or not and if you want to publish your broadcasts this is a slightly newer feature that twitch rolled out um, when dmca uh came more into the public uh, forefront um uh, for uh, timestamp i'm filming this video today on january 18th um, 2022, Twitch does a lot of A-B testing where they'll roll out specific features to different subgroups of users at a time. So what I'm showing you today might not look exactly the same as yours does. I'm also a Twitch affiliate. If you're not yet an affiliate or if you are a partner, you may have slightly different settings. Um, the most recent things Twitch rolled out were follower emotes, um, phone verification, and the suspicious users control are some of the newest safety features or features they've rolled out. But here in VOD settings, uh, for so we're under settings stream, we have the store past broadcasts and always publish VODs. You can choose to exclude certain categories, like if you wanted to exclude just chatting, or if you were uh, doing like exercise videos, you don't want those VODs stored or something. Um, you could make those available to people. And then if you scroll down here, the enable clips settings. This one's a very useful moderation tool um, in, January 2021 Twitch, uh, or was it 21 or 20? No, that was 21. Um, Twitch rolled out the Pog Champ of the day, and we all saw when Critical Bard got um, clipped out of context and uh, blown up and harassed to a severe degree. So this feature is one way that you can mitigate some of one maliciously making clips of your channel. You can set your clips to be subscribers only, followers only for a specific like a specific duration. I have mine set to they have to be a follower for one hour, but you can click on here and you can change it to any duration you want. You can exclude certain categories from being able to make clips, same as your VOD storage. And you can dis disable the creation of clips entirely if you wanted to. You could turn that off for a particular broadcast for if you needed that for some reason. Um, sub only is also an option. 
um permissions editor uh raids um if you are an active target of some harassment going on you could set your raids to block all raids or only allow raids from people that you are friends with teammates with or that you follow or allow all raids um for a general default allow all raids is fine i only recommend uh, turning it on to this if there's like an active situation going on that you need to manage with harassment now let's move on to the channel settings social media links um i have to browse through to double check um featured content if you want to set up auto host um of particular people showing which team you have displaying um twitch recently changed auto host functionality so it is significantly less useful it is not broken it's an intended change in functionality sadly um but that, that is what it is um moderation itself so um here is where you find your auto moderator rule sets as you can turn on they have eight different i think it's eight yeah, eight different categories of terms that you can set to filter in different ways auto moderator is not great it's based on machine learning which twitch is very proud to talk about any time that they give a, they're like executive vp of safety gives a talk about that she'll always mention um, machine learning algorithms being used to help out with running these things they're not great um especially if you're you know reclaiming a term like a lot of uh, lgbtqia terms um the the filters will nab those as this could be harm used as harmful language very very frequently they're not great um so i personally don't use them very use auto moderator very much but uh if you do not have a lot of human moderators or if you don't have active moderators it's definitely very useful to have on in that case um so auto mod rule sets is one thing blocked terms and phrases is another i want to be very 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 clear about this these two things have nothing to do with each other the blocked terms list does not add terms to your auto moderator again the blocked terms list does not add terms to your auto moderator they are unrelated to each other um, blocked terms you can add for example the term um, if you wanted to add the term if you wanted to add the term joggers to your blocked terms list so that no one could type that word in in the chat you could add that to your blocked terms list right in here I'm not gonna click into there and show you mine um, because I have some private information in there um, Permitted terms and phrases tries to prevent certain terms from being caught by Automod, but it also doesn't work very well. But blocked terms only blocks if they use those specific terms. It does not give you the pop-up dialogue for moderators or the, the streamer of, this term was used in chat. Do you want to allow or deny this message? It does not do that. If you add terms to the blocked terms, it is unrelated. I need to hammer that home because a lot of people have that misconception. Um... You can use wildcards, which means an asterisk. So I could do J O G G asterisk, and that would that would grab jogger, joggers, joggering. I don't know why that's not a word. Anything along those lines, it would grab. Um, you can do specific hyperlinks. You can do with that um, to just globally block them. They cannot be posted in your chat for like. Uh, if there's a particular Twitter account that you want to ban, so like twitter.com slash twitch asterisk, it would block anything from the Twitch Twitter account being posted into your chat, for example. Um, permitted terms, we went over. So this new feature, ban evasion detection, I haven't yet actually seen this in action, so I don't know exactly what it looks like, but as reported on their blog, um, this will either restrict or monitor users if they appear to be ban evading, and moderators can also manually choose to mark a user as uh, restricted or monitored. So monitored means it would just flag it, so mods would see, hey, this person made a comment, and restricted would mean it would hold the comment and wait for mods to say approve or deny this comment. This is supposed to, using their machine learning algorithms, detect when it looks like someone has just made a new account to try and harass you. Um, 
I haven't seen it in action yet, so I don't know how useful it is. Um, banned chatters list, obvious. Um, chat options. So block hyperlinks here is one that confuses some people because a lot of people try to use a chat bot and use this feature. Block hyperlinks here on the native Twitch dashboard blocks all hyperlinks for anyone who is not a VIP or a moderator, no matter what. Y your bot cannot permit them through this. Um, if you want to have a whitelist or a blacklist or um, to have a permit command to allow people 60 seconds to post a link, you need to do that through an external chatbot. I recommend Nightbot is what I use, and it's the easiest to set up and has a lot of documentation, but most chatbots have that functionality. Um, this block hyperlinks is if you just want, want to globally just block them all no matter what. Um, it's the nuclear option. There, I recommend using a chatbot if you want to for, for most use cases. Um, then the non-mod chat delay here. <clears throat> the non-moderator chat delay is very useful. Um, especially if you're having like a front page stream or a promoted sponsored event where you're going to get a lot of eyes on your stream, you can set this for between zero and six seconds. And what that does is your moderators see messages come in in real time and they have that chat delay. So they have these six seconds before the messages appear to everyone else. So any uh, IRC connection to the chat won't see them. Any bot that's reading your, your chat can't see them um, and uh, human users cannot see them for those six seconds. So if you have a, a bot that's detecting terms and timing them out, or if you have a human that's reading quickly and seeing a bad message to take it out, you can prevent chat from ever seeing that issue in the first place. And so that can help make your stream a much smoother experience for users. Um, so this is, uh, in a front page stream is an example of when this is commonly very useful, when you have a lot of people coming in saying weird comments like, what the fuck is this? When there's something on screen they don't understand. Um, so you can just get those out and then chat never has to see them. And so they, they, uh, they can, it can filter out some of what chat sees. So they aren't seeing the wave of message deleted, message deleted. So that's very helpful. Um, chat verification, uh, the email verification has been around for a while. They expanded the functionality a little bit and phone verification came out last fall. Um, whether coincidentally timed or in reaction to the hate raids, one of the two. Um, email verification, I recommend just having that on for everybody. All chatters must have a verified email. It's too easy to just make a new email account to verify a Twitch account with anyway, so this doesn't really do much. But the phone verification is big. Um, so this right here is what I would recommend as the minimum settings. I would recommend that uh, basically brand new accounts uh, are not allowed to chat unless they have verified a phone number. And uh, if they are not following uh, and do not have a verified phone number, they can't chat. So without verifying, they have to be an account older than a week and they have to have been following for 10 minutes. With phone verification, they then ignore those settings. Um, but this may prevents just uh, someone just making brand new accounts to spam or harass. So I have that set to one week. Uh, without a verified phone number, their account must be older than a week old. And I have it set to effectively, if your phone is not verified, 10 minute followers only mode is what this, this next setting means. Um, and then uh, I would assume you're not making a moderator anyone that you do not trust. So it's okay to exempt moderators. Um, VIPs and subscribers exempting from that. Uh, you need to know your community, how you're using your VIPs, who's subscribing to you, whether or not you want that. You can, of course, increase these settings. Um, you could also make first time chatters. You can make all chatters require a phone ver ver verification. I recommend this as just a starting point and then make it more stringent if you need. Um, setting up chat rules. This window here, so we're in the, again, we're still in the settings tab in moderation. These chat rules are the ones that appear if you go to your chat window. So when someone newly types in chat and it pops up that box right here to click into, um, this is where you'll enter the text that goes there. And you can also view those at any point if you click on the chat settings cogwheel. Anyone can do this. So if you're a moderator, it'll show you all the mod settings. But there's this button switch to non-mod settings. So this is what the normal chat settings preview looks like. 
there is a view chat rules button right here on any stream you can click that and read what they have put in as their chat rules um so if you need to go back and reread those those are there um, not a lot of people know that you can go review them again but this is the thing that will pop up and people will have to say okay i agree to these before i can type in chat and uh, so this is where you enter those. Um, unban request was rolled out maybe a year ago. Um, there's... I haven't encountered very many cases where it's been useful, where someone was like mistakenly banned. It's happened a couple of times. Um, it is often used for harassment, where people will say one last racist thing in the unban request. Or do like a just asking questions oh i don't know what i did wrong when they were spamming uh, when they were spamming joggers in your chat over and over and over again um so this uh, you can enable or disable it entirely um, and you can set a cooldown of how long they have to wait you can set it in uh hours days months um before they can send an unban request i have it set to three days so that they cannot same day um do harassment but if they do come back a week later and either write a good apology or reveal that hey you were, you banned 10 people and uh, caught me up by accident in the middle of it something like that um followers only mode there is a toggle here you can also do this in the chat with a chat command just by slash follow oops followers that's three l's Slash followers and then a time in seconds. So 600 seconds. That, oops, that's 10, that's 600 minutes. Okay, so it's followers in minutes. My mistake. So followers 10, 10 minutes followers only mode. You can do that and be a chat command is how I usually do it. You can also have a stream deck button or a, um, you can use this toggle, anything like that. Same with subscribers only chat. Subscribers only is not a duration, it's just on off. Um, moderator tools in chat allows your moderators to view uh, that, that chat ban history, the user logs. Um, so if we go back over here and let's pull up myself. Um, so without that uh, setting enabled, your mods would not be able to view the chat history and see what people have been typing. And that's where you can like add the mod comments if you want to, which is very useful to track issues over time. Um, so you can just type in a comment of what reason an action was taken with a user. Um, so when there is an active situation, if there is an incoming hate raid or just something seems really weird with a bunch of bot accounts coming in, the first thing I do is quickly turn on followers only mode. So just slash followers 10. Um, and then that gives the mods time to you know, pause some of the incoming wave, see what's going on, take a moment to assess. Um, I do not recommend leaving the followers only mode on, especially now that we have phone verification. Um, I don't recommend leaving it on permanently, but if there is an issue actively happening, it's the first thing that I do to stop the spam without interrupting the entire stream. But it's totally okay as the broadcaster to be, hey chat, we're gonna go to the BRB screen, or I just need you to give me a moment while we figure out the situation here. We'll be right back. Thank you for your patience. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, now streamer survey. No, that was for the analytics. Affiliate settings. There are a few things in here that are actually useful. So this is where your affiliate or partner settings would be. Um, uh, ad free viewing for your subscribers. Most streamers offer that as a benefit. Um, allowing subscribers to ignore slow mode. I recommend keeping this one off because if you're dealing with a moderation situation and you need to slow down the chat, having your subscribers ignore that will not help because obviously a large portion of your chat will be subscribed in a, and so if there's a lot of stuff coming in, it won't, it won't help slow it down. So I recommend that off. Sub only chat is uh, also used pretty sparingly and rarely. This next one is one that's very subtle and not used a lot. If you do have your chat in subscriber only mode, so uh, again, the example of when Critical Bard was the pog champ of the day and got some very, very bad uh, 
serious harassment targeted at him. He had to go in subscriber only for like a month. And you can cheer bits and attach a message to that, even if you're not subscribed. So the bits and cheering, minimum threshold, can prevent that. It's a pretty rare circumstance because we aren't in subscribers only or emote only that often, but having it set to a minimum. So I, for that and another personal reason, just of the, the small cheer alerts annoying me, um, have it set to a minimum of 100 bits because someone who's racist will happily cheer one bit, say a message, cheer one bit, say a message, cheer five bits, say a racist message. They will happily spend 10 cents on you to do something like that. And uh, they, a bunch of them can and, can and sometimes will spam it if you are in subscriber only mode. So increasing the minimum bits to cheer uh, definitely helps with that. Highly recommend in that rare circumstance. Um, so that's in your affiliate settings. Um, and that is that. In viewer rewards, I actually set one up in my channel points. I set up a custom reward. I made my cheapest reward this uh, treat each other with respect and kindness with the description being, hey, respect boundaries, actively listen to the people around you. So I have this set at 300 points. So when someone follows and then it gives them the 300 points, it then pops up, hey, you've, you've achieved this new uh, channel points redemption you might want to check out. So it just pops up that little reminder. I have no idea if it helps at all, but I did it. And so it's you know, sort of like a second small rules prompt pop up. Um, emotes, extensions. Yeah, I believe that is the bulk of just the default Twitch settings. Uh, I mentioned chatbot for a whitelist blacklist. I mentioned blocked terms and auto-moderator having nothing to do with each other. Um, Twitch has added in the dashboard this safety center and creator camp, which have uh, links to uh, some of their blog posts and information about their various programs. They're not super useful, um, but they, they, they do exist with like, let's see, let's see what they're combating targeted as. Point moderators, turn on followers only mode. Um, okay, th this is actually this is actually a good a good five step uh, thing for some basic strategies. Actions to take if you're targeted. Longer time. Yep. Yeah, so, okay. Th this, no, this is actually pretty good. I'm impressed. I haven't looked at this recently. They have updated this. That's great. Okay, so managing harassment. Ignore block. You record mod logs. Okay, so these are actually a lot better than they used to be. They have worked on these since I have more recently looked at them. That's great. But uh, the music has been provided by Lo-Fi Girl here today. Again, my name's Daspiff. I'm a professional moderator here, blah, blah, blah. I'm available for consultation. Message me if you want to inquire and or hire me. Um, Twitter, Twitch, Discord, uh, at Daspiff is where you'll find me. I hope this was helpful. I know I went through things pretty fast and jumped from one to the next pretty quickly, but I hope it was useful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you.